I am strong. I am fearless. I am courageous. I am beautiful. I can do all things. I am created to be me. I am a woman. And I am funky. Hi, I'm Sheila E. Welcome to Sheila E. TV. It's a fabulous Saturday. Yes, it is. Um, my guest today is associated with this man right here. Woo! James Brown, yes. How? He was the bass player for James Brown in the early 1970s and later with Parliament Funkadelic. He is funk. He created funk. He is a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, inducted in 1997 with 15 other members of Parliament Funkadelic. Please welcome the funk master himself, Bootsy Collins. Woo! Funk royalty. The name is Bootsy. Y'all that don't remember me, I'm the boy with the street degree. Bootsy Collins. I always love The universe has got ways of directing. Bang! Give me that one for me. The James Brown one. Give me the one. Bang! Give me that one for me. The funk on the one. Yeah. Bang! Give me that one for me. The James Brown one. Give me the one. Bang! Give me that one for me. And hit that one. Yeah. James Brown wanted to hang with us because he knew I could play a lot of stuff. And that's why you get sampled so much. Playing all that crazy stuff. Hey, Sheila. Woo! The king is on his throne. Hi, Pat. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank 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 I knew you were going to have like some colors, some kind of design. I was like, I'll represent Leopard today. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, for real. Yes. So how you doing? Doing good. Um, you know, had been working on a, well, learning how to work in a whole nother capacity. And I, I guess everybody, all of us musicians uh, uh, were in training for a brand new way to, you know, get self-expressed. To get our uh, vibes out, you know. Um, know. It's been a great learning process. Yeah, it you is know? a learning a, process for yeah, sure. Yeah, and, <laughs> and a great time for uh, being creative. Uh, yes. I think in the end, I think in the end it's going to work out really good for it us. Will. And, yeah, it will. Yeah, it will work yeah. out. And that's the one thing is the one tool I believe that everyone went to during this whole process was music. Was music, it's, you're right. It's all been about music. Our way of being able to get through this pandemic is through music. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, well, I want to go back for a second. I know that, you know, I've known you forever. And yeah, the first thing yeah. that comes to mind when you say Boosie is, he is the funk. You are wow. the funk. You walk the wow. funk. You've created the funk. I wow. mean. No, for real. And it's just like all of the things that you've done and and that map that you have created, that that vision is for us has just been incredible. It's just been well, incredible. Well, well, Sheila, you know, I think it's like you understand the part of, you know, being a musician and listening for us is one of the major keys to getting there. You know, as opposed to telling people what to do and this, that, and the other. That comes along the way. You know, you, you start to be able to, to say, well, I hear it like this and I hear it, you know. But coming up, getting started, you know, it's like, for me, it was like absorbing all of this great talent that was around me. You know, mm -hmm. I know street musicians that just blows everybody away. <laughs> you know, you mentioned Bootsy with all this these great, you know, talent that was around me, you know, it was like, I was nobody, you know, in my mind, it was like, you know, all these great that don't get recognized, mm -hmm. you know, walking up and down the street, playing, singing on the corner, I would be <laughs> listening, you know, and when I got over to King Records, you know, we were hired to do different sessions. So we had to play, uh, you know, the part of accommodation you know mm -hmm. we were accompanying you know and you do it great Sheila you do it great I mean I I hadn't seen a better person to do it 
than you because you know how to lead and you know how to accompany and follow. And see, that's a lot. That's 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 a big deal for a musician because nowadays most musicians want to lead. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, a, a lot of them that's coming out, they don't know nothing about listening to the vibe and feeling yeah. what a vibe is at and getting into that. And then, you know, OK, well, what about this? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a. Um, you know, that whole thing is a whole learning experience. I'm still learning. You know, yeah. I think when you stop learning, it's over. You know? No, that's uh, true. I say all the time that we, I am continuing to be a student of life. Uh, I will never know everything. And if I stay a student, I'll grow and I'll learn things. Yeah. And that's, that's the best part of being a musician, an artist, yes. is to, yes. to grow and to learn from other people and even the next generation. I mean, I'm so inspired by what's happening musically right now. It's, it's incredible. Oh, and man, yes. Yeah, yeah. it's I mean, I mean, I mean, for a while there, it was like, oh, God, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening to our music, you know? I know. And now the, the, the younger younger generation they they coming on strong i mean they really getting into it they learning i'm happy i'm hopeful mm -hmm. you know because uh they coming on strong they and are it's, it, and it's a beautiful thing it really is i it's yeah. it's unbelievable and i'm so excited about it yeah. um how did you i know that <laughs> i know that your mom named you bootsy um yeah. and i know you asked her why what was her response she looked at me first, you know, with that look, that mama look, or that that are you crazy look, you know? <laughs> and it's like, she gave me that look, and then she said, cause you look like a Bootsy. <laughs> and I fell out. She didn't know what the heck I was laughing about, you know? And I, at the time, I didn't know what I was laughing about either, cause <laughs> when she said that, I knew better than to ask her, well, what does a Bootsy look like, you know? <laughs> I mean, because it was like, it was so, you know, so out of left field. Right. But that's the way mama was, you know. And I guess that's probably why I am the way I am, because I got a lot of her vibe, you know. How old, uh, how old were you when she, she named you Bootsy? Uh, that was, I was like eight, eight years oh, old. Oh, really? I started, yeah, I started playing guitar when I was nine. So she had named me, she had gave me that name right before... You know, I, I started playing guitar. Wow. You know? Nobody in this world, I felt like, um, had a stronger back or was stronger mm -hmm. than my mother, you know? Uh -huh. And she just, you know, she gave her life. She would give her life for me, my brother Catfish, and my sister, for the family and mm -hmm. for the community. She would take in people to stay. Mm -hmm. And it's whoever mama said was going to stay with us, you know, we had to, we went with it. I that's, mean, it wasn't even no question. And that sounds you know? like our house because moms and pops would leave the front door open, jam sessions, yes. people hanging out. I, I swear, we just wake up in the morning, people just hanging out, sleeping on the couch. Like, can um, you lock I, the door? Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's how it was. It was that's it was the, the way same it was. And, and talking about that's, your brother... Catfish, um, with my brothers and I, we switch all uh, our percussion instruments from oh, different drum, instruments. Yeah, yes. drums, timbales, yes. congas, bongas, whatever. So we're always arguing about who's going to play on what song because I want to be the one to play this one because I want to oh, take the solo. Oh, wow. so, <laughs> so did you and Catfish argue like that? Well, actually, you know, I, I grew up wanting to be like him. But at the same time, I wanted to uh, play in his band. And in order for me to play in his band, he needed a bass player. He didn't need uh -huh. another guitar player. So it was like, oh, this is my chance. Uh -huh. you, know, I, you know, this is my chance to get to play with my brother. If I play bass, and I didn't know nothing about playing bass. Wow. You know? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, I'm the one you need, you know, I'm the one you need. <laughs> and so he wasn't going for it at first because he knew I didn't know how to play bass, you know. Um, but I told him, if you get me four strings to go on this guitar, I will play bass with you tonight, you know. And he wow. said, get out of here. I was like, yeah, yeah. So 
I said, give me four strings, four bass strings. He got me four bass strings. We played that one night. I never will forget it. And it was like in a, in a rat infested uh, rat hole. <laughs> But you know we had we had the most fun in that rat hole, you know. It was called the Playboy Club, and wasn't nothing Playboy about it, okay? <laughs> other than other than somebody out in the audience saying Playboy, you know. <laughs> and that's and that's what they were doing all night, man. And we was wow. jamming like a mug. And I think what happened was I shocked my brother so bad that. He felt like, dang, this boy is serious. <laughs> you know? I mean, because he used to always laugh and joke. You know, his band always told him, you know, that, boy, that boy going to be something. That, but he wasn't trying to hear it because mm -hmm. he was eight years older than I. So when right. I'm nine years old, he's like, what, 16, 17? <laughs> it's like, I ain't got time for this boy, you know? But after he saw what, you know, the effect was on people, Oh. With me on that stage, you know, playing with him, and we both saw the effect. I mean, it was like, wow. It, it was wow. no way that we wasn't going to play together. I mean, wow. that etched it. You know, from that night on, it was me and my brother. We started wow. playing clubs, you know, and it just started building from there. We went from the clubs, we went to King Records, started playing in King Records. From there, you know, Hank Ballard. Marvel Whitney, you know, uh, then James Brown. I mean, it just kept growing. So did so. It's true that when James had his band, and then he fired everybody, and then brought you guys in. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Because we we had already been over at King Records recording for other people, mm. you know, and the talk started getting around like Boosie and Catfish, you know, and Frankie and you know Don Martin. Wow. I mean, the mugs is you know so the. Talk started getting around, and James started getting interested, and, and he wanted to see how we act and how we performed uh, with Marvel Whitney. So he put us on the road with her first. You know, this we wasn't even thinking about playing with James, but we just knew that wasn't even in the cards. Sure. You know, uh, you know he was so huge, it was like, oh. And, you know, we playing at the wine bar, you know, <laughs> any bar we can get in, you know. And, you know, so we, we wasn't thinking like that until we got that call, you wow. know. And when we got that call, I, you know, I thought it was somebody joking, but it was Bobby Bird on the phone. Wow. Yeah. He's saying he was going to be there in 45 minutes to pick us up in James Brown Learjet. Woo! And we was like, no way, no way. <laughs> No freaking way, but yeah, oh, yeah, it, it all wow. happened. It all happened. And, That's beautiful. And we walked right into the gig that they were supposed to be doing, and it was like our, our heroes, Maceo, Fred, Clyde Stubblefield, Jabbo, well, you know them, and yeah. we walked right into their gig, you know, not knowing that we was crossing the picket line. You know, because wow. we was we was coming in to replace them right. at that right. at that particular time. You know, wow. and um, so we had no idea. We come in laughing and grew. Hey, what's up? What's up? And they were mad, and we didn't know what was going on. Oh. So we didn't find it out until we went back and had the conversation with the Godfather. Then we found out because see, Bobby Burry wasn't rapping. He knew, you know, but he didn't feel like he had the right to tell us. Because, you know, he had to take us to see James Brown. And he's the one that told us, y'all going to be my band. And we was wow. like, yeah, we, we going to open, you know, we going to open for James Brown. He's like, no, nah, not open. Y'all going to be the band tonight, you know. Wow. So it was like, we don't, we ain't even rehearsed, you know. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry about that, son. I got you. All I'm going to do is call the songs out. Y'all ready? Y'all know all my songs. And we was like, yeah, yeah. So we got on stage, wow. all the songs out. He hit them, you know? And then after that night, it was like rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. We was used to rehearsal anyway. 
Right. That's right. all. That's all. That's pretty much all we did. You know. All rehearse. of us used to. Yeah, we would yeah, just rehearse. Yeah, that's I mean, what it was every, about. All, the musicians loved to rehearse. Mm-hmm. So uh, when we got with James, we just perfected it because that's what he liked to do. You know, he loved to rehearse. So it was like. You know, regiment, you know, we wasn't, right. you know, wasn't no fun time, you know, like going to party, you know, <laughs> no. He really wanted to not have us going to party because he thought I was too wild for that anyway, you know. Uh, I just want to get a few girls. I, I, I keep that boy, keep that boy busy. So that's, that's that was his thing, keeping me real busy. Wow. And, uh, he, he kept me busy too. That but I did crazy. get a chance to sneak out here and there every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that was that was really good time. Um, really a good time with him because it was that's awesome. It was a whole learning process. You know? It it was. I'm sure yeah. being so. Well, you were 18. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 I, it, that, yeah. That had to be unbelievably like. It, I mean. I mean, it was it, light years. Walk, walk. Yeah. It was it was light years ahead. And how because, did you uh, and how did you go well what was the difference I should say it's I I mean I know by just watching an outside looking in how James was just very in a sense militant you know yeah, where you yeah. know rehearsal rehearsal um everybody's got to play their part you know there's a, yeah, a specific yeah. reason why which made the music what it was and then how y'all dress clean as the board of hell yes Yes. I mean, yes. shoe shine, all of that stuff. Don't Hair be late. Comb, you know, all of that. All know. of that. And um, then you go to Uncle George Clinton Parliament Funkadelic, and that's on the other side of the earth. <laughs> well, you got to remember, too, Sheila, it's like times was really changing. You know, you get shifts in times, and, you know, bands started to really feel like we need to be up front. You know, we need to, you know, we, need, we can sing, you know. I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's that was the feeling. I mean, it was like we don't need no singers. You know, we we can do it ourselves. Actually, that's how we um, got started in Detroit when Billy called us from the Spinners, and you know, it seemed like the only way we was gonna get to Detroit was to go play behind the Spinners. Wow. Okay, so it was like well, we didn't have no idea about George. Actually, we only had seen George them one time. But uh, we wanted to go to Detroit because Motown, you know, everything was popping. Mm-hmm. And we knew if we get there, somebody going to sign us, somebody going to hook us up, you know. Yes. And, uh, so we said, okay, well, we'll go, you know, we'll go up there and play with, with Billy now. Although, you know, we was like, dang, you know, we ain't get got a chance to, you know, wear our freaky clothes. Because we was wearing our freaky stuff anyway, <laughs> just not on James's gig, oh. you know. So, you know, after the show, we got real freaky with it, you know. But, you know, that that wasn't enough. We wanted to show people that how freaky we were. Mm-hmm. And and so when we got to Detroit, you know, it was like we met with Billy and we met uh, Malia Franklin, who you know. Right, yeah. And and uh she suggested that man, you don't you don't want to be playing with Billy now, you know, not with that that wild thing y'all got going on because we call ourselves the house guests after we left Jane right Brown. that's right yes you know so um she um she hooked us up i mean she did so much for us right and then she told us about uh george clinton needing you know needing the band because billy then was uh freaking out on him mm. and we was like you know we rather you know rather go with george now because they they doing what we want to do Mm-hmm. You know, and that's freak out, act a fool, and do what we, you know, whatever we want to say and play what we want to play, you know. Yeah. And George is, is like, y'all come over here. Y'all can do anything y'all want to do, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, oh, man, this is the spot. So, Ooh. I mean, when George, when George first heard it, he was like, man, whatever, you know, whatever y'all learn over there, I want some of it. You know? <laughs> and when he said that, it just opened up a whole, you know, it's like, yeah. and then yeah. and then the opportunity to actually, who's ever first in the studio can have that day, you know, because everybody stayed up at night partying and this, this. but you know, I cut my party off at four o'clock, you know, I'm going to at least get three hours of sleep. <laughs> and, you know, once I get three out, my three hours in, 
eight o'clock in the morning, I'm at the studio hitting it. Wow. I'm hitting it. <laughs> that is insane. And you know, the engineer, when I first met the engineer, Jim Vitti, he was like, oh no, not not Bootsy, because he knew I had all those pedals and stuff, you know? Who had, they ain't no bass player had no pedal boards. <laughs> You know, well, that who is and, this, and who is this mug? That's know? right, somebody <laughs> who has created the funk. That's right. right. So when we played, talk about the pedals. When we played uh, the Apollo, one of the times we played. Oh, it was uh, for Uncle George's birthday. Oh yes, yes. So yes. you came in and you had all these pedals, and I mean, there was gear. I'm not even a bass player, but there was gear up there. I'm like. That mug's got to be 50 years old. <laughs> Woo! And I said, that's why you play like that and you sound like that. You, I can't even, it was ridiculous. I, I, I had the whole community with me. <laughs> the whole <laughs> Oh, and I'm like, that's why you're Bootsy. Oh, man. All right, uh -huh. so I have, I have a couple more. So uh, one, wait, what record, first of all, what record was... The one what was it, uh, that I played drums on? Um, yeah, the real deal. Oh, the real deal. Real deal. Oh, you tow that mug up. <laughs> you tow that mug up. And we had a chance to do it live. You remember that? Yes. Right? At the studio? Yes. That was yeah. like, are you sure yeah. you want me to come play? What, Timbali? You like, no, drums. <laughs> um, woo! <laughs> um, but it's just crazy, like, to be able to play with you. So then come, I don't know, what has been four years ago when I did Iconic Record or three years ago. Right, right. Um, and then I said, I want, I'm going to do a James Brown medley. Like, oh, man, y'all killed yeah, it. Yeah, to, to play that, and I listened to it, and I was like, man, I don't even know how the band was able, James, y'all were able to do the stuff that you did. Yeah, So yeah. when I played it for my band, they're like, are you crazy? Like, how are we going to play this? I said, we are going to play it because I want to do it, and this is how I want to do it. They're like, yep. what's wrong? What you been drinking? <laughs> I mean, y'all killed it. When I got it, I was like, oh, my God. I, I mean, it brought about so many memories. And then the other part of it was, you know, Cause you had you had that up tempo like James do on stage, you know, live vibe. I'm like, okay. So I had to get my I had to get my chops together. <laughs> uh, it's like I gotta keep up with Sheila. Oh my oh, god, I, I got chills right now. <laughs> it was so crazy, and to hear you like I when we played it back, I got the files from you. We played it back in the studio. I was running around screaming like, y'all don't understand, that's Mosley, that's Mosley Plummet, do you know? I could not stop yelling and screaming. I'm like, I'll run around like a little kid, like, y'all don't understand what this means. This oh, is man. what I'm talking about. And you killed yeah. it, but you played the video. I mean, you sent us a video of you playing it. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is just insane. <laughs> just insane. Well, I had... I had to do you justice, man. I mean, you killed it for me, and I was like, dang, I hope I can keep up with her. She just, I mean, you <laughs> And that's what's, that's what's even crazier. When we first did that medley, back then when we first recorded it, I wanted that energy, like you said, of it being live, yeah. and we did that, and yeah. it was live, but then when I got on stage, I'm like, okay, now your, en your you adrenaline's going, and you're you like, no, it, it needs to be faster. You're like, but where's the pocket? I said, the pocket is in there. Just play it. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yes. Man. Amen. It's like, where's the pocket? You got two of them. Hello. <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, I want to thank you, my brother. Thank you so much for being on the show. I love you so much, and I can't wait I to play you, with Sheila. you again and see you and hug you. We got to do it. We got to do it. Until then, until then, just be safe. Yes. You know, because we need you, Thank you know, especially nowadays, especially nowadays. Thank okay? you, love. Thank you. All right. And thanks for having me. All right. I love you. Right. Love you too, babe. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. The funk master himself. Ah, oh, I can't. How do I even, like, stop that kind of conversation? 
There were so many stories. I, I, I wanted to hear them all. Bootsy, thank you. Thank you a million times. Thank you for being on the show. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here on Sheila E. TV. I will see you next week. Back on the one. Back and about the one. It's all about the one. Woo! All about the one. Woo! All about the one. <laughs>